YouTube. Today in the Naughty Librarian, I am doing my mid-June wrap-up. So far in June, I have managed to read six books and they've been a little hit or miss, if I'm being quite honest. And we'll get into that, honestly, but uh, there's been some hits though, and that's great. Honestly, I think one of these books is already on my list of top books I've read this year. So, so far so good. On that note, let's get into the books I read so far in June. First category is romance, and I read three of them. First things first, I read Lady Claire is All That by Maya Rodal. Let's be real for a second here. Uh, this is a retelling of the 90s cinematic gem, She's All That. <laughs> if you were also a 90s kid, like myself, you probably also grew up really, really liking that movie, even though it's problematic, but you like it anyway. And this one, uh, it's, it's like such a retelling. It's almost exactly a retelling. <laughs> Except, you know, it's also in Victorian era England. So th that's the difference. But it's, it's pretty similar. <laughs> like, I could do more of a review, but that's basically it. Like, <laughs> there's not a lot other substance going on here. It's a literal retelling of She's All That. And uh, I mean, was it cute? Yeah, you know what? It was cute, okay? Is it exactly my personal taste? Mm. That's up for debate. Uh, <laughs> I think I ended up giving it like three stars in the end because, well, it's technically like 3.5, but like a low 3.5. So I didn't want to round up. It's a right around there because there's nothing particularly wrong with the book. It's just not like my flavor profile that I'm like into. However, I think if you are a fan more so of like Julia Quinn type stories, I think you would really dig this. It was kind of fairly smutless. If I'm being honest, I think there's just like one, there's only one sex scene. And I think there's like a little bit of like touchy-feely stuff, but there's just one sex scene. So it, it's very clean, almost. <laughs> so I feel like this is more in the vein of a Julia Quinn type story. And I know a lot of you guys love Julia Quinn. So if you're one of those people, then I think this book would do it for you. It'd be your jam. But uh, yeah, it's cute. It was fun and it's light, but it's, you know, it's a retelling of She's All That. Like there's not a lot else to say about the plot. <laughs> I also read Not the Girl You Marry by Andy J. Christopher. This one I ended up giving three stars to because I'm generous. <laughs> I have had hit or miss reviews for this. Uh, it just in my friend group, I've had friends who've tried to read it in like DNF because they couldn't stand it. I've had some friends who loved it. So I didn't know how I was gonna feel, but I didn't do too much research. I just jumped in because that's just who I am as a human. Objectively speaking, I don't think it's very poorly written. I think it has some definite uh, comedic value. I think the timing was good, so there's that. And there's a lot of situations in here that were well paced. So there is some writing credit, credit where credit's due here. However, the whole premise of the book makes no sense at all. <laughs> and that, that's what shoots this book in the foot. Like, if you, your premise doesn't make a lick of sense, then the, the book is just preposterous and you can't suspend disbelief because it's ridiculous. <laughs> Basic plot here, you have Jack and Hannah. And they meet at a bar one night. Hannah is kind of um, a sassy girl. She's an event planner. And Jack is kind of uh, like, like a BuzzFeed personality, making listicles and videos and stuff. That kind of person. And they meet at a bar and they both kind of liked each other. And then in their respective jobs, they both get like propositioned into having a relationship. Like Jack needs to uh, write an article about how to lose a girl in 10 days. So basically it's an article about how to be a dick. And Hannah wants to uh, work, she's an event planner, so she wants to plan this wedding, but her boss doesn't let her plan weddings because she says she's not good at relationships, so she can't plan a wedding. Already, it's ridiculous. because. <laughs> In what world is your boss telling you that you need to go find a relationship or else you can't do this? Legal. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're not allowed to do that. Legally, she could have just sued her boss and won. It's completely ludicrous. That would never happen. 
what and her boss isn't even a guy it's, it's another woman i'm very confused by the whole situation and jack he has write this article and the whole time he's writing the article he feels so guilty all the time because he's lying to hannah and he's being a dick and doing all these things that like would make a girl break up with you to hannah and he feels bad for lying to hannah and it's like why don't you just lie in your article? Oh my gosh, you're still lying. <laughs> like, you could just date Hannah and then pretend to do the bad stuff and write it. You're an author. Fiction exists. I don't understand why he's lying to her. <laughs> like he's doing it for like a Buzzfeed listicle type of article, okay? Journalistic integrity has no place here. I don't understand why he just doesn't lie in the article. It makes no sense. <laughs> I'm getting heated about it. But yeah, the, the premise of the book makes no sense. So therefore, all of the characters' actions make no sense. Because it's like, why are you doing that? You could have just done that. And that's not even a hard logical leap. Like, I'm pretty sure children would have figured it out. So that's my problem with the book is that it makes no effing sense. <laughs> But three stars, because like I felt like it had comedic value and the timing and the pacing was actually well done. So there is some writing talent here. Oh, this plot needed work. Where was your editor? <laughs> oh gosh, okay, anyways, moving on. The last romance I read was Beach Read by Emily Henry. This is a buddy read with Leanna from Leanna's Library and actually at the end of the month, I'll put the date on the screen here, we are going to be doing a live show where we chat about this book because we both buddy read it and more details about my review will come out in that video. So hopefully you guys can tune in and chat with us. But in the meantime for this video, let's do a little quickie review. This is about two writers, Gus and January, and they're both kind of having writer's block and they both uh, end up living in these like neighboring uh, beach houses in by a lake. So lake houses, beach houses, I don't know. And over the course of one summer, they kind of uh, redevelop their relationship because apparently they went to college together because of course they did. So the relationship rekindles and they are writing books. January is a romance novel author. So she's going to write outside of her comfort zone. She's gonna write what Gus usually writes, which is lit, lit fic, so something depressing. And Gus is trying to write something out of his comfort zone, so he's trying to write a romance. They're switching genres. And along the way, relationships develop. Now, I have read a lot of romances in my day. I like to think, hello, I'm the Naughty Librarian. Have you met me? Well, I've read a lot of books that felt similar. I don't know, not the plot or the characters necessarily. It's just I've read like books that felt similar in writing style and pacing often. So like it kind of felt recycled to me, even though it's not. I don't know, maybe it's just me vibing with this book in a weird way, because I feel like I've read a lot of books that have similar tone. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but when I was reading it, I wanted something fresher or um, sillier, I don't know. Like, I mean, come on, they're in a, they're neighboring beach houses and they bicker. Like, this could be so silly and fun. <laughs> and like, they, they didn't take the time to be silly. I think the book was taking itself a bit more seriously than it needed to. Although it is funny, it is a rom-com, but it does take itself a bit more seriously than it needs to. So I gave it like four stars. I thought it was pretty good, but overall it had some room for improvement. It didn't necessarily feel as fresh as I wanted it to, if that makes any sense. Next category is sci-fi and I read one of them. I read A Bad Deal for the Whole Galaxy by Alex White. Oh my goodness, I love this series so much. <laughs> It's hard to describe what this plot is in particular because this is a sequel book. This is the middle book of a trilogy, so just go with me. This is what I like to call a cheater sci-fi because it is a sci-fi book. They're in space on spaceships doing space stuff. However, there's also magic. So yes, I get those fantasy elements that I really, really want while doing a sci-fi. So I'm reading a sci-fi and enjoying it because I'm cheating. <laughs> So we're continuing on with the crew of the Capricious from book one. They are a crew of misfits from all corners of the galaxy and they are come together into uh, kind of like a, like a crime solving bunch. They're like 
private detectives, kind of space detectives, I'll say. They, they're out there righting wrongs and solving crimes and, and solving mysteries all over the galaxy. And they kind of, like, are famous for it now. After the end of the first book, which was a very public ending for the whole galaxy. All the whole galaxy saw what they did and they saved the day. So they're really famous for saving the day. So now they have to save a lot of days. <laughs> So we're just continuing on the same thread of that story, but this is its own contained story. So it feels like a, like another season of a TV show, if that makes sense. Like season one was book one, this is season two, where they're following the same threads, but it's a self-contained story. So it's not really necessarily completely dependent on the first book. I won't get into this specific adventure because I, I don't want to be spoilery, but uh, it has really, really awesome space battles. They're very epic. I don't feel like, like if you listen on audio, it's fine, but you can't do other things. So like you have to focus because they're so detailed and in depth and it's very cinematic, but like the action sequences in this are so detailed that you really need to pay attention and they're awesome. They're so well written. And also there's a lot of great representation in here. This book actually has ace rap, which I never see in books, so that's really interesting. And they also have a whole world where everyone wears like these disguises so you can't tell anything about what they look like, so everyone is referred to as like gender neutral pronouns. So it's kind of like a, 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 a non-binary world in a way, and that's kind of really, really cool. So this is really inclusive, it's really action-packed, it's really exciting to read, and it's really fun. There's cool magical elements, there's cool sci-fi elements. It's just awesome. I give five stars. I love this series. The final book, I think, comes out in July, and I, like, I can't wait for it. I'm so excited. Love this series. Last category is fantasy, and I read two of them. I read The Good Luck Girls by Charlotte Nicole Davis. Oh my goodness, everybody. Like, honestly, five stars. I was obsessed with this book from like page one. It's so good. <laughs> I'm so glad I got it. I've been meaning to get it for a while. And I think I hauled this uh, a little, maybe a month or more ago. And I finally read it and I love it. It's gonna be on my favorite books of 2020 list. It's so freaking good. It's a fantasy Western that has a lot of really interesting inspiration kind of thrown in here. It doesn't happen in the real world, but I would say if I'm gonna pick an era for it, it would be happening in the era, uh, right around the Civil War, I would say. So that kind of Western type of vibe. Except in this world, there are ghosts and magic and very vicious things in the woods you don't want to mess with. And we're following this group of five girls, and they are the good luck girls. Basically, they are sold to welcome houses, which you can assume what a welcome house is that they're selling girls to. And uh, they're basically branded and forced into uh, prostitution. Let's be real here. And these girls want to, you know, escape. And one thing comes to another, which I won't say what is because I, I think that's spoilery. And uh, they do. A group of girls escape and this is kind of their wild Thelma and Louise adventure across the world trying to uh, basically cross the border and be free. Get their freedom back. They want to get to the land where they're not slaves or forced prostitutes, or whatever have you. They use other words for these terms, but if you're relating it to our world, you know what they're talking about here. And all five girls are so different and unique, and I love their like sisterhood bond between them. It's just, oh man, like I wish I could go more in depth about like plot points, but that would be so spoilery. But it's so good, it's so well written, and it's fairly short. How long is this book? Okay, so it's 348 pages. It's not very long. You could knock it out in a couple days. It's fan effing tastic. I highly recommend. Please read this. Please read this. Oh my gosh, please read this. It's so good. <laughs> Like I freaked out and I messaged like all of my friends that you need to read this. It's amazing. So I'm going to be that crazy person who doesn't shut up about this book because it's so effing good. <laughs> and it's also YA. 
Uh, I would say definitely older skewing YA. I wouldn't put this for younger teens just because of the, the graphic content. But it's a YA book, but I feel like it's a good crossover for adults as well. It's really good. It's really good. I'm, I'm going to keep gushing about it. But yeah, five stars. It's amazing. I love it. Please read it. Last book I read so far in June is The Unspoken Name by A.K. Larkwood. But I'm using the term read loosely because, um, a DNF'd. Uh, like it hurts my soul. It does. It hurts my soul to say that. But uh, I, I read 50% of this book and I hated it. Like it was just not going anywhere. I felt like it was just, I don't know. There was something off in the writing. I felt like the pacing was really off. It just felt monotone, which is weird because I was reading it and it felt monotone. It felt like one note. There wasn't enough ups and downs and like the structure was really strange. Uh, like there's this big, you think the book is going to be about one thing and then they finish that plot like, like, I don't know, like 150 pages in and then you're just like, what, you're starting a new story now? Like, why? Why are we starting a new book? <laughs> like, so I don't know, things were just finished too soon. So they didn't get any time to develop the character. And then they just start a new plot thread. And I'm like, why are we doing this? Why was there a time jump in one book? There's like a multi-year time jump. What is happening? Like, I can't really describe fully what this book is about because I only read the first 50% before I gave up. But we're following Kasorwe. She is an orc. And she was destined for a sacrifice to a god. And then she's like, I don't really want to do that. And then this wizard shows up and he's like, hey, don't sacrifice yourself and like come hang out with me and learn magic. And she's like, done. <laughs> and so they go off on an adventure. And you think the book's going to be all about that adventure. And eventually at the end of the book, you'd have that big conclusion with all of this intrigue going on. And they, they wrap that shit up quick. And you're just like, wait a minute, wait a minute. That was the good stuff. And then they start the second story arc, which is exceedingly not as exciting. Ugh, like, it really hurts to say that, that I DNF'd, but I did. Because I was talking this book up let, right and left. All my, I had a lot of friends who said they liked it, but I don't know why they liked it. It just felt really disjointed and monotone. And I don't know, maybe it's too high fantasy for me. Like I like high fantasy, but this is like another level of high fantasy. It kind of feels like World of Warcraft, I would say. Like if you like World of Warcraft, you would probably get into this. But reading World of Warcraft fanfic when you are not a fan of World of Warcraft kind of makes you feel very displaced in the narrative. So I don't know, I wasn't vibing with it. Part of me still wants to finish it, but like I was like 50% of the way through and I was literally forcing myself to keep reading. And that's something I decided for 2020 that I'm not going to force myself to read things. If I like get to 50% and I hate it, I don't have to read anymore. <laughs> I can stop anytime I want. So yes, I gave up, but it's beautiful. It's a beautiful book. I'm so bummed. I hyped it up too much, maybe. I overhyped it, but yeah, I gave up. It was just very World of Warcraft and, and not in the good way, I guess. All right, so that's all for the first half of June. Some books were good, some books were not so good. Like some books I read were excellent and great. I gave them five stars, I loved them. And then other books were not as great. And only one of them I DNF, so I don't know. It's, it's a mixed bag right now. <laughs> also, I have almost completed my TBR list because I read one in May from June, and then I read six, uh, seven of the ten books, so I'm almost out of my TBR. So the second half of June is just going to be a free-for-all again. So it's going to be mystery books, and I'm kind of excited about that. <laughs> anyway, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, have you read any of these books? And if so, did you like them? Did you dislike them? Um... What's a book that you overhyped yourself for lately? Because for me, it was Unspoken Name, and I overhyped it, and then I DNF'd, and I feel very disappointed in myself. Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like, and if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye!